Let's talk about how a web server responds to a web browser request. As we know, when you use something from your web server, you make a request uh, from your web browser to the web server. And then the web server does something, uh, and that's what we want to talk about next here, and ends up with a response back to the web browser. And then your web browser will normally display that, render it in, in some way. So what goes on here on the web server itself? Well, your web browser basically has a, a couple of options. You have probably mostly worked with, to this point, static files. Uh, in other words, these are our files that are HTML files that you've already generated. They are CSS files that you've created to, to make that site presentation look nice, or JavaScript files to give you that functionality that your website needs. And the way that this web server works for these static files is it takes the URL that's given as part of this request right here and directly converts that URL to the specific file on the server. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. This URL equals this file. And then it just sends back that file. And it becomes basically a lookup function in the web, browser, web server for what the web browser gives us. And that works, <coughs> and it works quite well. But it doesn't provide us the kind of functionality that we expect from a website. In reality, nowadays, we expect that there are not just static files that exist, but there are also <coughs> dynamic files. And what I mean by that is these are, are files that respond differently to different users, uh, to the same user but different types of requests. Um, if you click in one location on your browser, it generates a different output than if you cl click on another because it represents a different action, a different piece of data. If you type stuff in, it recognizes that you're trying to buy this book and not this other book, that you're entering your credit card and making a purchase, that you are liking this particular request on the page and not someone else's request that you didn't like so much, and so on and so forth. And we need dynamicism. We need change in behavior on the server depending upon all this context that's incorporated into this request object. And so we can't have just a fixed file available to us. What ultimately means is that we really have programs. We have programs uh, that run and whose output is important to us. Their output uh, are going to be things like HTML files and they're going to be like CSS files or JavaScript files. But they aren't files. They don't exist anywhere on a disk for us to look up. It's actually a program running that generates these outputs. And so it's really important to understand that this program needs to be executed to, to run and it's going to want information. It's going to want information from two places. It's going to want information from both the browser and from the web server. Okay, And from, from the browser, let me draw a little arrow here, it's going to want to know things like uh, what kind of request type was given? Was it a GET request or a POST request? Was it a um, patch or a PUT or a DELETE? Because those will all mean different things. 
Uh, if it's a post, we probably want to know the data that's being passed to us so we can save it or update our, our information. Uh, if there's a query string, we're probably going to want to know that because we know that the user is looking for not all the information on our web server, but for a smaller piece of information. And uh, this could keep going forever, but the browser wants to know these kinds of, of information and do something based on it. Whereas the web server it can give us information, different information. It can give us information like, um, it can tell us, excuse me, it can tell us what its IP address is or if it's running one kind of web browser or, or another. And ultimately, all of that information is <coughs> going to be needed to pass through. So this need for execution and this need to have information from the browser and the server is going to result in some way for the web server to communicate that information to the web page, I guess you could call it, or the program that acts like the web page. And that is where something called CGI, or the Common Gateway Interface, comes in. And that's the communication mechanism that gets used between the web server and this program that is running to give it all all that information, to give it this stuff from the browser, to give it this stuff from the web server, and, and that's how it works. So ultimately then that program is going to run, it's going to take in all that information it received from the browser, web server, do whatever it's supposed to do, and then it's going to generate output. And that output is going to be in the form of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript depending upon what the program is trying to do. And then that output is going to be given back to the web server. And then the web server is going to treat that output just like it did these static files and send that output back to the web browser as its response to the browser's request. And that is a short description of how the web server responds to the web browser. In our next video we're going to look into more detail on this common gateway interface and how we can write programs that react dynamically to this kind of information.